far <coughs> but a long axis. So what you really had was you were given the force vector, then you had the unit vector that defines the axis. So again if I draw this you'll have the force and then you have some axis and we call this as AA then you're given a unit vector UA about <coughs> that axis. So when you say that you're given those two vectors then you're looking at the components for the force those are effects Fy and Fc. So those three components will be known. Then same thing here, when you say that the unit vector is known, you know the x component, you know the y component, and you know the z component. So <coughs> once those two are known, you need to pick a point on the axis. You choose a point A and the choice will depend on knowing the coordinates of that point, which means for point A you will know the coordinates x A, y A, and Z A. So this thing would be known. I mean that's how you will make the choice on point A. Then same thing with the force. On the force, you need to pick a point that's known. So you will have let's say another point B, and the coordinates for that point will be x B, y B, and C B. Those are also going to be known. Then you will choose a vector, or you're going to just join these two points and that gives you a vector r. Then I could write the moment component for the axis AA as a determinant where your first row is the components of the unit vector which is UAX, UAY, and UAZ. Then the second row on the determinant <coughs> is the components of the position vector R and that's Rx, Ry and Rz and the third row on the determinant will be the components of the force Fx and that's Fx, Fy and Fc. So that's your equation or the determinant that gives you the magnitude for the moment about axis AA. And in this equation, your components, when you say your components are x, that's going to be the, uh, <coughs> we look at Rx, so that should be x p minus xA, and your y component is going to be yb minus ya and then you have the c component that's going to be cb minus ca and as I said that choice you made for the points is a and b and you know the coordinates for those points. Then <coughs> your actual value of the determinant you go let's say you use this you have u a of x and then you, you left over is the determinant here. So there will be R Y F Z minus R Z F Y. Then you have <coughs> if you take negative, you use this, you have U A Y. Now you're gonna work with this, this, and this. So you'll have R X F or Z minus Rz f of x. 
Then you have the third one, you're going to use this. You're going to have plus u a z. And this time you're going to have this, 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 and this. So you go r x f y minus r y f x. So that's the <coughs> actual value for the determinant. And this is going to be a scalar quantity or just a plain number. I mean, if you knew the coordinates A and B, if you knew the components for the force and you knew the components for the unit vector, then this is going to be one single number. Now, sometime when you open the determinant, then you can accommodate this negative sign within this, which means I could write this as u a y and we can go r c f x minus r x f c. So, all we did was we took the negative from here and just multiply that in here. So, <coughs> I mean sometimes it's easier to work this way when you find the determinant. Finally, <coughs> since moment is really a vector, so your m a a, the vector here will be given by the magnitude which is coming from here and then you're going to multiply this by the unit vector u a a. So that's what you get as the final vector for the moment of force f about the given axis a a. Okay, we're going to look at some examples and the first example I'm going to look at is <coughs> 